Hi everybody. Off. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everyone. Should I just put this here? Should yeah, I'll just move this a little bit to the front. Uh, there we go. Right. We're going to leave this here for a moment for our guest. For our special guest. Welcome to our special Good reading. Our <laughs> very special reading again in uh, the Shakespeare, Shakespeare and Company, Company in Vienna, Austria, in the Bermuda Triangle. And it's called the Bermuda Triangle because there are lots and lots of bars here in this there are a few passageways and there are lots and lots of bars here and apparently you can get lost in them like you can get lost in the Bermuda. You're, you're in a, a smoke. I'm on fire. She's on fire. <laughs> in a bookstore. You're in a bookstore. <laughs> because we were actually allowed to light something in here but don't tell anyone. But it's actually only an incense stick and it's, and it's an incense stick that is supposed to be full of passion and love. So if oh. you suddenly feel passionate and loving towards me tonight, you'll know why. I always feel loving towards <laughs> you. <laughs> anyway, so we would like to thank yes. Imata Fashion for providing us with these lovely dresses. Uh, the jewelry is by Gloria Swarovski. Not by mine. Gloria. Love the Yes, my jewelry. Um, we also would like to thank 
hookah lamps in Vienna in the 7th district who are providing us again with a beautiful, beautiful lamps. And we would like to invite our special guest to come. We do have a special guest because for any of you who have been, who do follow us and, and check out what we're doing, um, by the way, have we introduced ourselves? My oh, name no. is Joanna Godwin Seidel. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Saman Gerard. <laughs> I run the Vienna Theatre Project. I'm a director and an actress. I'm an actress. And a director. We are a film director as well because one. she's won an award. She's won an award. I anyway, <laughs> this is who we are. And at the beginning of the lockdown in Vienna, we decided to do read 1001 Arabian Nights. So yes. welcome this evening. And for those of you who have been, do follow us. Um, I did announce towards the beginning of this week that yes. we had some wonderful meetings last week in uh, a very, very nice cafe house that, you know, in times of pandemics, one doesn't go clubbing anymore. One spends the <laughs> night in a cafe house in Vienna, which is what we did with two fantastic people. Um, one of them, and he's going to shoot me for pronouncing his name wrong, potentially, is called Kamyad. Yes. Yes. Sagedi. Saderi. Saderi. Why is it? Well, it's G I G H I. No, it's G. You don't have that. Oh, okay. So Saderi, who is an absolutely fantastic um, musician, composer, composer uh, conductor. He plays the piano. He sings. He plays the tar, and I'm sure a number of other instruments as well. And he very, very graciously and kindly agreed to write some theme music for our 1001 Arabian Nights readings, which we're very, very grateful for. And without further ado... Yes, we will bring Kamyab over to you. And Please enjoy the original theme for our project. Yes, well, I don't know that it's the original one yet, but he's going to play something for you <laughs> to introduce himself. And we're going to disappear off stage left. And we will see you later. And we'll see you in like meeting. five, ten minutes after yes. Kamyab's finished playing. So enjoy Kamyab. Enjoy. And off we go. <laughs> Hi, good evening. My name is Kam Yap. My I'm Sadati. Yeah, G H in Persian is K. Yeah. And okay, I invited to this project, and I love this project because so many people don't listen to the book or like it. But in this project, as I'll invite to learn more or like it. That's great for me as well. And now I wanna compose one full album for this project. And now the two song is ready for it, but I compose more. I compose more, more, and more. And now I wanna play for you my instrument. This is my old friend. This one has uh, the name of his is Tar. And I wanted today play for you just as a instrumental music with my instrument and yeah, enjoy it.
wait for a moment. That to lie. was do you need beautiful, a chair to sit wasn't on? it? Do you need a chair to sit on coming out yeah. this way? Then let me pass you that one over. There you go. Listen, that was decent. My water. That was beautiful. What a gift. What a gift. We can what tell you all about how we first. met. How we met uh, at the end, because we do have a Q&A today <laughs> to find out <laughs> all <laughs> the exciting things about Saman's <laughs> private life. <laughs> you <laughs> wish. <laughs> you wish. Um, so you can ask anything. Kamiyav's going to join us at the end. And if we're yes. really lucky, if we're really lucky, we may be able to ask him to play us one short little piece of music where he actually sings, because I happen to know he studied under the great masters in Tehran, in Iran, and he has a very, very beautiful voice as yes, well. Yes, he does. So we're very lucky. And he played us, when we met earlier on, he played us one of the pieces of music that he's creating in the album for our 1001 Nights readings, and it was really beautiful. And actually, one of them he's going to create as well. He's going to compose a song to a poem about Shahrazad. Yes. So that's beautiful, yes. isn't it? We're very lucky. Should we start? I'm just so thinking of something. <laughs> okay. She's thinking. That's unusual. So she's thinking. While she's thinking, I will read. And um, I d are we going to read the four four nights? Are we just going to read two nights tonight and then just do a Q and A? What, what, let's see how we go. Shall okay. We? Have you got your? Yes. Are you looking at your watch a little bit? To no. Watch the time? No. Okay. Yeah, I'm no. all good. Okay. All right. We're good. all good. So, I'm going to start off the evening with the 170th night. That is the right night, isn't it? It is the right okay. night. <laughs> so this is this is my textbook. You probably can't see it. But Samantha's is full of little red lines and yes, all sorts of I stuff. I like to prepare. And mine is also very well prepared and has nothing. <laughs> so let's see, I'm sure we'll see how it goes. So everybody, <laughs> now, Enjoy. when it was the 170th night, Shahrazad said, it has reached me, O auspicious king, as regards the tale of Kama al-Zaman, that there was in times of yore and in ages long gone before a king called Shariman who was lord of many troops and guards and officers and who reigned over certain islands known as the Khalidan Islands on the borders of the land of per the Persians. But he was stricken in years and his bones were wasted. Without having been blessed with a son, albeit he had four wives, daughters, of kings and three score concubines with each of whom he was wont to lie one night in turn. This preyed upon his mind and disquieted him so that he complained thereof to one of his wazirs saying, Verily I fear lest my kingdom be lost when I die for that I have no son to succeed me. The minister answered, O king, peradventure Allah shall yet bring something to pass, so rely upon the Almighty and be instant in prayer. It is also my counsel that thou spread a banquet and invite to it the poor and needy and let them eat of thy food and supplicate the Lord to vouchsafe thee a son. For perchance, there may be among thy guests a righteous soul whose prayers find acceptance. Thereby thou shalt win thy wish. So the king rose, made the lesser ablution and prayed a two bow prayer. Then he cried upon Allah with pure intention. After which he called his chief wife to bed and lay with her forth right by grace of god she conceived and when her months were accomplished she bore a male child like the moon on the night of fullness the king named him kama al zaman and rejoiced in him with extreme joy and bade the city be dressed out in his honour. So they decorated the streets seven days, whilst the drums beat 
and the messengers bore the glad tidings abroad. Then, wet and dry nurses were provided for the boy, and he was reared in splendour and delight until he reached the age of 15. He grew up of surpassing beauty and seemly head and symmetry, and his father loved him so dear that he could not brook to be parted from him day or night. One day, he complained to a certain of his ministers and lent the excess of his love for his only child, saying, O thou wazir, of a truth, I fear for my son, Kamar al-Zaman, the shifts and accidents would befall man and fain would I marry him in my lifetime, answered the wazir, O king, know thou that marriage is one of the most honourable of moral actions, and thou wouldst indeed do well and right to marry thy son in thy lifetime, ere thou make him a sultan. On this, quoth the king, hither with my son, Kamar al-Zaman. So he came and bowed his head to the ground in modesty before his sire. O Kamar al-Zaman, said King Shariman, O truth, I desire to marry thee and rejoice in thee during my lifetime. Replied he, O my father, know that I have no lust to marry, nor doth my soul incline to women. For that concerning their craft and perfidy, I have read many books, and heard much talk, even as the say as say of the poet. Now, and of women, ask ye. I reply, in their affairs, I am versed a doctor rare. When man's head griggles and his money dwindles, in their affections, he hath naught for share. And another said, Rebel against women, and so shalt thou serve Allah the more. The youth who gives women the rein must forfeit all hope to soar. They'll balk him when seeking the strange device at Chelsea. Though waste he a thousand of years in the study of science and law. And when he had ended his verses. He continued, O oh my father, wedlock is a thing whereto I will never consent. No, not though I drink the cup of death. When Sultan Shariman heard these words from his son, light became darkness in his sight and he grieved thereat with great grief. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased to say her permitted say. Now when it was the 171st night, she said, it hath reached me, O auspicious king, that when King Shahriman heard these words from his son, the light became darkness in his sight, and he grieved over his son's lack of obedience to his directions in the matter of marriage. Yet for the great love he bore him, he was unwilling to repeat his wishes, and was not wroth with him, but caressed him, and spake him fair and showed him all manner of kindness, such as tendeth to induce affection. All this and Kamal Zaman increased daily in beauty and loveliness and amorous grace. And the king bore with him for a whole year till he became perfect in eloquence and elegant wit. All men were ravished with his charms. <laughs> 
and every breeze that blew bore the tidings of his gracious favour. His fair sight was a seduction to the loving and a garden of delight to the longing. For he was honey sweet of speech, and the sheen of his face shamed the full moon. He was a model of symmetry and blandishment and engaging ways. His shape was at the, as the willow wand or the rattan cane, and his cheeks might take the place of rose or red anemone. He was, in fine, the pink of perfection, even as the poet hath said of him. He came and cried they, now be Allah blessed, Praise him that clad that soul in so fair vest. His king of beauty were the beauteous be, all are his riots, all obey his hest. His lip dew sweeter than the virgin honey, his teeth are pearls in double row close pressed. All charms are congregate in him alone, and deals his loveliness to man unrest. Beauty wrote on those cheeks for worlds to see. I testify there is none good but he. When the year came to an end, the king called his son to him and said, O oh, my son, wilt thou not hearken to me? Whereupon Kamal Zaman fell down for respect and shame before his sire and replied, O oh, my father, how should I not hearken to thee, seeing that Allah commandeth me to obey thee and not gainsay thee? Rejoined King Shahriman, O my son, know that I desire to marry thee and rejoice in thee whilst yet I live, and make thee king over my realm before my death. When the prince heard his sire pronounce these words, he, he bowed. <laughs> He bowed his head a while, then raised it and said, O oh my father, this is a thing which I will never do. No, not though I drink the cup of death. I know of a surety that the Almighty hath made obedience to thee a duty in religion. But Allah upon thee, press me not in this matter of marriage, nor fancy that I will ever marry my life long that I have read the books, both of the ancients and the moderns, and have come to know all the mischief and miseries which have befallen them through women and their endless <laughs> artifices. <laughs> and how excellent is the saying of the poet, he whom the randy moths entrap shall never see deliverance. Though built he forwards a thousand fold, whose mighty strength leave plates in hand. Their force shall be of no avail, these fortresses have not a chance. Women I deal in treachery, to far and near over earth's expanse. With fingers dipped in henna blood and locks in braids that mat the glance, and eyelids painted over with coal, they gar a string of thy mischance. And how excellently saith another, women, for all the chastity they claim, are uffal cast by kites wherever they list. This night the talk and secret charms are thine, that night another joyeth cast and wrist. Like in whence after night thou farst at dawn, and lodgest other white thou hast not whist. Now when King Shahriman heard his, his son's words and learned the import of his verses and poetical question, he made no answer of his excessive love for him, but redoubled in graciousness and kindness to him. He at once broke up the audience, and as soon as the seance was over, he summoned his minister and taking him apart, said to him, O thou the vizier, tell me how I shall deal with my son in the matter of marriage. 
And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased saying her permitted say. Now, when it was the hundred and second night. <laughs> hundred and seventy second. Hundred and seventy. <laughs> See, I was looking at it so clearly. Now, when it was the hundred and seventy second night, she said, It has reached me, O auspicious king, that the king summoned his minister and taking him apart, said to him, O oh, thou wazir, tell me, what shall I do with my son in the matter of marriage? Of a truth, I took counsel with thee thereon, and thou didst counsel me to marry him before making him king. I have spoken with him of wedlock time after time, and he still gainsaid me. So do thou, O wazir, forthright advise me what to do. Answered the minister, O king, wait another year, and if after that thou be minded to speak to him on the matter of marriage, speak not to him privily, but address him on a day of state, when all the emirs and wazirs are present with the whole of the army standing before thee. And when all are in crowd, then send for thy son, Kamar Azaman, and summon him. And when he cometh, broach to him the matter of marriage before the wazirs and the grandees and the officers of state and captains. For he will surely be bashful and daunted by their presence and will not dare to oppose thy will. Now, when King Shariman heard the wazir's words, he rejoiced with exceeding joy, seeing success in the project, and bestowed on him a splendid robe of honour. Then he took patience with his son another year, whilst, with every day that passed over him, Kamar al Zaman increased in beauty and loveliness and elegance and perfect grace, till he was nigh. 20 years old. Indeed, Allah had clad him in the cloak of comeliness and had crowned him with the crown of completion. His eye glance was more bewitching than Harut and Marut, and the play of his luring looks more misleading than Takhut, and his cheeks shone like the dawn rosy red, and his eyelashes stormed the keen-edged blade. The whiteness of his brow resembled the moon shining bright, and the blackness of his locks was of the murky night, and his waist was more slender than the gossamer, and his back parts than two sand heaps bulkier, making a babel of the heart with their softness but his waist complained of the weight of his hips and loins, and his charms ravished all mankind, even as one of the poets saith in these couplets, by his eyelash tendril curled, by his slender waist I swear, by the dart his witchery feathers, fatal hurtling through the air, by the just roundness of his shape, by his glances bright and keen, by the swart limning of his locks, and his fair forehead shining sheen, by his eyebrows which denied that she who looks on them should sleep, which now commanding, now forbidding, O oh, me high dominion keep, by the roses of his cheeks, his face as fresh as myrtle wreath. His tulip lips are those pure pearls that hold the places of his teeth. By his noble form, which rises featly turned in even swell, to wear upon his jutting chest two young pomegranates seem to dwell. By his supple moving hips, his taper waist and silky, Skin. 
by all he robbed perfection of and holds and chained his form within by his tongue of steadfastness his nature true and high descent musk from my love her savour steals who musk exhales from every limb and all the airs ambergis breathes are but the zephyrs blow o'er him the sun methinks the broad bright sun as low before my love should quail as would my love himself transcend the paltry pairing of his nail so King Shariman, having accepted the counsel of his wazir, waited for another year and a great festival. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased saying her permitted say. Now when it was the 173rd night, she said, it hath reached me, O auspicious king, that Shahriman, having accepted the counsel of his vizier, waited for another year and a great festival, a day of state when the audience hall was filled with his emirs and viziers and grandees of his reign and officers of state and captains of might and main. Thereupon he sent for his son, Kamar al-Zaman, who came and kissing the ground before him three times, stood in presence of his sire with his hands behind his back, the right grasping the left. Then said the king of him to him, Know, O my son, that I have not sent for thee on this occasion and summoned thee to appear before this assembly and all these officers of estate here, awaiting our orders, save and accept that I may lay a commandment on thee, wherein do thou not disobey me. And my commandment is that thou marry, for I am minded to wed thee to a king's daughter and rejoice in thee ere I die. When the prince heard this much from his royal sire, he bowed his head groundwards a while, then raising it towards his father, and being moved thereto at that time by youthful folly and boyish ignorance, replied, But for myself I will never marry. No, not though I drink the cup of death. As for thee, though, as for thee, thou art great in age and small of wit, hast thou not twice ere this day and before this occasion questioned me of the matter of marriage, and I refused my consent? Indeed, thou dottest and art not fit to govern a flock of sheep. So saying, Kamar al-Zaman unclasped his hands from behind his back and tucked up his sleeves above his elbows before his father, being in a fit of fury. Moreover, he added many words to his sire, knowing not what he said and the trouble of his spirit. The king was confounded and ashamed, for that this befell in the presence of his grandees and soldier officers, assembled on a high festival and a state occasion. But presently the majesty of kingship took him, and he cried out at his son and made him tremble. Then he called to the guards standing before him and said, Seize him. So they came forward and laid hands on him and binding him, brought him before his sire who bade them pinion his elbows behind his back and in this guise make him stand before the presence. And the prince bowed down his head for fear and apprehension and his brow and face were beaded and spangled with sweat, and shame and confusion troubled him sorely. Thereupon his father abused him, and reviled him and cried, Woe to thee, thou son of adultery and nursling of 
abomination. How durst thou answer me on this wise before my captains and soldiers? But none hath chastised thee. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased saying her permitted say. Thank you very much for tuning oh, I in. I'll tell you what, I've just realised. When you do that, does it for my dress? <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Right, I'm glad you. Now. Yes. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed the reading. Thank you very much. Yes. It was lovely reading with it you was tonight. Lovely. Yes. yes. I we spent it all day much. talking to each other yes. on the phone and sorting things out and organising. It's a real shame, actually. You can't. We're going to take a photo. We, we actually have two wonderful photographers with us this evening as well. Yes. In, in, in the form of Ina and Thomas Photography. You can find them on Facebook. If you just go to at Ina and Thomas Photography, then you can see their Facebook page. And they are really, really wonderful photographers. If you have an event, a theatre production, they photograph all of Vienna Theatre Project's shows. Yes. So they do headshots and all sorts of stuff. Um, we will tag them anyway. We'll tag it's them once anyway, the exactly. Over, so we'll make sure, them. make sure, if you're looking for photographers, they're a little, they're a little, a, a little, uh, uh, they, they actually don't have to, you know, get together to an office to meet each other because they live in the same office kind of thing. So, oh, right. <laughs> yeah. without further ado, without further ado. <laughs> So, no, do Eno and Thomas Photography, they're here with us Thank this you. evening. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining us. Thank you very much to Shakespeare and Company yes. this evening for hosting us again. Yes, it's been a real well, pleasure. we will continue now. We're going to continue now. Kamya is going to tune in. You're gonna, okay. Are you going to come and, and sit with us again? Yes. Is that what we're yes. going to do? Right. Okay, good. Yes. We shall start the Q&A. Um, yes, I'm going to... Oh, I just... <laughs> I just <laughs> I read, Let me get I the am laptop. going to read. Go and get your laptop. And I'm going to read... Something. I have to hold this together a little bit. What people have said. All right. Yeah. Oh, that's very sweet, Joint. Yes. Thank you very much for all the likes, everybody, and the people that are listening in. That's really, really wonderful. On Instagram, and hi, everybody, on Facebook. So, so you have some questions, right? People also pre. Yeah. Well, let's see. The, the issue is we cannot see from afar the questions. So, if you have questions. Right now is the time. The Q&A is officially starting. And you can ask and us. I can already ask see. Us. Do you want to come and sit? Yeah, I okay. can sit there. Well, we'll just sit. Watch her dress and sit in between us if you want to. Or that. I don't know anything here, but I No, we won't see you I'm over there, sweetheart. Sit in the middle. Just sit in the middle. Watch her dress. That's the only thing. Watch her dress, sweetheart. Because otherwise we'll get I'm shot. Sweet. There okay, you go. Then you can <laughs> see you. Bye. Bye. Oh, we don't know. Anyway, look, we can see this. I'll, I'll move a little closer. Yeah. There we go. Okay. And look, on this one, we're very good on that. It's just on the on the Instagram one that we're a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. We are waiting for your questions. Mm -hmm. We have the first question from Tony, who is based in Amsterdam. <laughs> You like Amsterdam, Joanna? Uh, actually, uh, yes, I love Amsterdam. Well, I'm hello, gonna Amsterdam. I, I'm gonna be for the, yes, here's I love the, Amsterdam. Here's the question. How about that? Which story so far is your favorite? Okay, well, my, my absolute favorite is the one that went on for like three months. <laughs> yes. And it was the one with, what was, what was her name? She, I don't know, she was this really, really nasty piece of work who got, who got the, King of Baghdad, and and, and the, remember the daughter got kidnapped. No, the daughter of the Greek Sophie, the daughter of the Greek yes. king, got kidnapped, that? and she ended up in Baghdad or or I can't remember where. Okay, I can't and remember. then and then I don't know this woman Sam's Al Bada Bada whatever her name was. She then went back to Greece, and then the two brothers, and then the one brother got murdered in the big war that they ended up having with Greece. Remember? See, that's how uh, no. convoluted. But that was my that was my favorite. That went on forever, and every time you thought the story was going to end, yes. it would suddenly, and then it would be a story within a story within a story. Yeah, it's like this story. Russian doll system, yeah, right? Exactly. You have this main story frame of Shahrazad, and then she tells a story, for example, about him. He tells a story about her, and she tells. Yeah, and this it was, is, this it was, was going San Al da, 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 something beginning with D, but she was a really nasty piece of work. That one was. I didn't know. But that was she was Greek, one. so that's probably why, maybe. Joanna. 
<laughs> Sorry, Greek. Sorry, everyone in Greece. I love Greece. I think it's a really beautiful country. All right, so we have the first one. Next one. Which themes do you think are predominant in A Thousand and One Night? I'd like to answer that. Go on. There is a lot of passion in all kinds of colors. We were actually very, very surprised. We thought it's more fairy tales, right? Middle yes, Eastern beautiful is. fairy yes, tales. Lovely lambs and yeah. women and men and yeah. love. And um, we were quite shocked. Is the right the word actually? The introduction yes. chapter is terrible. It's um, well, it's not terrible. There, it, there well, is it a brutality is. to it. There well, is um, well, there's like, a lot of violence. There's a lot of sex. There's a lot of S and age sex. There's a lot of Rape. witchcraft. Um, what else? It's terrible. There's a lot of love though, like between two people. That's too. But you also have women fighters, which is something I love. Yeah, that's very women good. soldiers, strong, strong women. Yes. Some nasty women too, don't you just yes. love it? Yes. There's so. some quite funny stories though. I tend to blush on some of the stories. Yes, yes, they are very explicit actually. Some are very explicit. Very, very the one explicit. with the basin and the women and the men. Oh the three yeah. Oh that my one God. was incredible. <laughs> I mean they were doing all sorts of fun stuff in that one. You know was a yeah, there was very. Yes. I blushed um, we, thinking we, about it. I, I don't know. I don't know. We we did actually come to a consensus that when when somebody was underage, we wouldn't mention their age because yes, that's true. <laughs> there are a couple of those at the very beginning as well, and so we had to be very very careful about that, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we did. Yep. Next one. This is for you. How long will it take you to read all thousand and one nights chapter? Well, if we read just one chapter a night, I think we'd still be doing it in two thousand and thirty. But we're not doing that. So no. we are reading, like tonight we read four chapters. Yes. Uh, wasn't it until 2025 we said? Approximately, yes. Yeah. yeah, guys. By which time Saman will have had five babies. <laughs> what do you think? A model machine? <laughs> Let me see if there are other questions here. And a huge Hollywood career. On Instagram. You waved. Oh, no, that's not a question. I think you have to roll up. Oh, yeah, up, yeah, roll yeah. down. Wave. I'm okay, I'm waving. Back. Guys, wave don't be shy. Ask us something. Somebody ask us something. Well, I tell you what. All right, there you go. I could Nothing ask. I could ask. I could ask. Can you have if it's sing us another song? Mm -hmm. uh, sing us yeah, but I have more questions you answer, for you. you answer, all right. Well then. Okay. All right. This one. This will is you? for me. Nadia okay. from Morocco is asking, what will happen after the thousand and one nights for the project in Shahrazad? That's a very sweet question. All right. You know what will happen? Once this project is over, I will say, and Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day, <laughs> and, and ceased saying, saying her permitted, permitted say. say. And what's your other favorite sentence at the end? Go inward to go oh, out. Oh, but that's, well, that's, we have to wait for that. Here's another one for you. Right. Why did you decide to do this, and how did you get together? Well, Saman and I have known each other for how many years now? Three years, four years? Five years. Yeah. When did we do the We met what by together? pretty much after. We met at your film home. premiere yes. in Vienna. Mm -hmm. We met then and we liked each other straight away, more or less, didn't we? Yes. And then I was doing this play called The Who and the What and um, I called Saman up and said, do you want to do um, a play which might get you killed? And she said, yes, absolutely, let's do it. Clearly this is not the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I sent out my CV just like in any other business. She happened to have the who and the what. Well, we, we met. We, 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 <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. All right, well, you have to read the story of the who and the what and then you'll understand why I'm saying what I'm saying. Anyway, so that's how long Saman and I know each other because we got introduced by a very dear yes. friend of ours, very, we're very, for which we are both David, very grateful. David, David introduced us. Yeah, exactly, that's what yeah. I said. Oh, I'm sorry, David. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and then you're not in the picture, by the way, anymore, Saman. Oh, and then, oh, and then, and then, um, and then the lockdown happened in Vienna and we, and we were talking one day on the phone and yes. I said to this man, I want to do something for everybody during the lockdown. And she said, really? So did I. And we then basically asked each other more or less at the same time, what are you going to do? And one of us said, Oh my God, well, I'm going to read 1001 Nights. Yeah, you said it, and I had yeah. the same idea a few nights before. And, and then and she, said, she said, oh my it, God, thought, me too. Yeah. And I said, them, well, let's get together and read it together. It was a sign. And that's how, it was a sign, and yes. that's that's how this started. Yes, yes. perfect. Perfect. So the lockdown, everybody, we have the pandemic, something to thank for, that Saman and I get to wear beautiful dresses, <laughs> read wonderful stories, and meet amazing people. 
and one hopefully thing. earn a living out of it very yeah, very, very soon, soon. Dear yes friend. yes Kamya, question for Kamya. Yes. Yes. Do you have it? No, do you have Did it? You Wait. I just want him to sing. <laughs> okay. Kamya. You can ask me. How did you compose mm -hmm. the piece of music for tonight? Okay. Uh, I have Edith for it because uh, this story is uh, together Persian. Arabic or like it and now I have an idea for this that I can compose like uh, between pop between Persian and between Arabic together I think that's good but uh, I try to compose with uh, instrumental English language but the poem inside the book but about English and uh, Persian nice. I try to compose it would you say something in Farsi? I have such a such a strong accent. Would you mind saying something in Farsi for both of us? Yeah, yeah. He's our speaker. Shahzada Tesigu. When they don't want me to understand what they're talking about, then they start speaking Persian. She wishes. <laughs> that's not the case. When we like to bond of our culture, that's more. Okay. Okay. And next okay, week... Oh, he's got something to say, hola? Okay. Oh. Uh, this is for those who are in the world. I'm going to say that this project is 4 or 5 years old. I'm going to say that this project is 4 or 5 years old. It's called 1001 Shab. It's called 1001 Shab. It's called 1001 Shab. Lucy, yes. mm -hmm. very beautiful. He pitched it. always it. sounds beautiful. Oh, he pitched yes. it. Thank you very much for pitching. Thank you. It always sounds very beautiful. And next week we actually have another guest sitting right over there. We do have one other person in the room with us today who is going to be reading for us all next week in Arabic, English, and French. He even offered to do it in Italian, but I said, well, maybe three would be enough for the moment, maybe next time. Yeah. You can add the uh, 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 Italian. And Salahadin is sitting in the room with us this evening because he wanted to pop along and see what, how we do it and what we're up to. And um, you want to come in and wave and say hello? <laughs> He's like, no, why did you make me do this? Okay, and he put his makeup on and everything. Oh, okay. So I'm he's going to squeeze in. <laughs> hello. <laughs> okay, all right. We would like to thank one more time Shakespeare and Company for hosting yes, us tonight again. Hookah for the lamps. The beautiful Diana. lamps, the beautiful lamps. Imato Fashion for the dresses. Your earrings. Gloria Swarovski for the lovely jewellery. Thank you, Ina, Ina and Thomas, Thomas for, the pictures, for the pictures, the photography, and Mr. Kamyev Sadeiri for his wonderful music. And thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for I'll see you in. soon. Can you sing a song for us? As, as a little, as a goodbye. You you, yeah. But sing, sing this Sing. Sing. Okay. Oh my, he's like, oh, what, okay. sing? I don't sing. All yeah, right, well, he's hard. going to finish it up he's then. Got, but you have to say goodbye. your last, I'm going to say many blessings to yes. you. Yes. And I will say, as usual, remember to go inwards instead of outwards, my friend. Much love to you guys. Thank you. Good night. So we're going to leave you with Kanya for yeah. one short song. And, and Salah Hadin is just going to bring in his, 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 his tar. Yeah.
هزاران نکته پنهان است هزاران نکته پنهان است در زلف سیاه تو که می خانم شر شر که می خانم شر شر رو می دان که یک بار شر زاد قصه هایم باشی هزاران نکته پنهان است در زلف سیاه تو که میخوانمش هر شب به امید آن که یک بار شرزاد قصه هایم باشی Thank you.